foreign policy and the nonprofit Fund for Peace have released this year's Failed States Index that ranks the world's most vulnerable nations. And our Christina Rafini has a report. Let's take a look. Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen, Somalia. Some old standards mingle with the new frontiers in America's war on terror. But these nations are not off a State Department watch list or a Pentagon briefing book. They are four of the top 15 nations on Foreign Policy Magazine's annual index of failed states. Released Monday, the Failed State Index ranks nations on their rate of decay, with the worst and least stable nations at the top. Usually the attributes are uh, an inability of a government to serve its people, provide public services, uh, to have a monopoly on the use of force. Somalia is number one for the third year running, having limped on for more than a decade without a functioning government. Somalia uh, is really the quintessential failed state in the sense that everything has collapsed. Pirates swarm the coast and Islamic radicals choke the urban centers. In Yemen, number 15 on the list, Al-Qaeda has found new haven for training camps. The failed Christmas bombing attack was planned and launched from within its borders. Iraq and Afghanistan also rank in the top 10. As the U.S. moves ahead with its plan to remove combat troops from Iraq by the end of next month and Afghanistan by June of next year, foreign policy says these two nations are not nearly ready to stand on their own. Iraq is not out of the woods yet, and certainly Afghanistan, where we have a very large presence now. And Pakistan, a key partner in the war in Afghanistan, comes in at number 10. The inability of governments in Somalia, in Yemen, uh, in Pakistan to control all the areas within their borders and to be able to suppress insurgencies or terrorism uh, is, a, is a major concern, not just to those governments, but internationally. Since 2001, the United States has spent more than a trillion dollars fighting the war on terror. Much of it spent in the countries on this list. Yet since the index started six years ago, the same 15 nations have been named the top 10 biggest failures year after year. Right now what we're doing is dealing with it mostly as a threat from a terrorist lens. Um, and one of the problems we have is that we tend to respond only in the security threat and we neglect the other dimensions. Dimensions like civil health and educational reform, which critics argue must also be addressed along with security. Because the longer these nations remain unable to govern themselves, the more likely it is that the U.S. will continue spending blood and treasure without getting much in return. Christina Raffini, CBS News, Washington.